It's good. So this is my first real YouTube video. I mean, I make videos. If you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, you see my videos. I'm always talking right in my mouth. But this is the first time that I'm not going to solidify things and put them together in one location so you can find it. Yeah, I'm serving right now. Anyway, so since this is my first time on this platform, I'll introduce myself. Hold on, let me turn this music down. Conalow, baby. I'm shouting. Don't need to shout. All right, so what up? Um, do I want to give you my real name? Nah, son. Nah, son. No, but um, just call me the Trap Yoga Queen. Reside here in Cleveland. Nah. Follow me on Instagram, Lauren underscore no hill. Um, basically, I fell into yoga about three years ago this summer. And um, as cliche as it sounds, like yoga saved my life. Yeah. So I know you guys have probably seen a big shift in society. Maybe it's a trend, maybe it's a fad, maybe it's the veil lifting and people are trying to really come into understanding who they are and their purpose on this big rock that's third from the sun. You know, I don't know. I can't speak to what everybody else is feeling. I do know, though, I feel it in the atmosphere. I feel the change coming. I feel people stepping into their true purpose. So, that being said, there's a whole lot right there going back a little bit. Yoga. So three years ago, I was working at the YMCA and got access to free classes. And it was like, yo, I'm going to try yoga. I was into like making better choices for myself. And yoga just seemed like it was an automatic addition to it, especially since I had some goals. I used to do gymnastics as a kid. And I was like, I want my back being back. I want to be able to do a handstand. So I really did it for superficial, like, this is cool. I want to take this picture of myself. So went to my first class and it was what we call uh rocking rock the hall of fame or something like that anyway it, it was literally three thousand people doing yoga in front of the rock and roll hall of fame that was my first class never had been to a real class didn't know a whole sequence of yoga wasn't really prepared even caught a cramp like mid-class like somebody had to come rub me out um so, like, I was really prepared physically for it, but then it was the feeling that I got after that I never would really have expected. Like, such elation, such joy, such peace, such connectedness that came after that. It was like, your soul was like, oh my God, I'm happy. And it was like, wonderful. And in the same breath, I looked at it like, I want to share this with other people. And... I don't know how it is for y'all, but being a black woman, when I go into spaces, the first thing I do pay attention to, whether consciously or subconsciously, is like how many women or how many people look like me. Um, it's been that way since I was a little kid. I've gone, been navigating white spaces. So it's like, sometimes you get used to being like one of three people of color in a whole room full of a thousand people. Um, and that's how it was at this event. It was like 3,000 people and I could still like physically count how many black and brown and when I say black and brown I mean you know other ethnic groups other than you know being black there and it wasn't that it was discouraging it was one of those like all right we got to get more of my people out here and a couple weeks later I in fact like had this dream vision thing that it was like 400 people all black men and women coming together to do yoga at the same space so like I brought all these other people with me because I wanted to show that we could all be connected through this practice of yoga so um, then, starting then, I realized that I wanted to, you know, go into spreading yoga <laughs> as, as this idea. Mind you, I still wasn't that into my own practice yet. But the fact that I was like, wanted to be a, like a yoga instructor, didn't know what that meant back then either. Um, I really just thought it meant just like leading some classes and teaching people how to stretch type thing. And then over the years, it has developed into wanting to create space for self-care. Um, so my transition to yoga has been from one that was really superficial, really goal oriented to understanding its place in my life to the point where when I don't practice, I feel worse than if I did. Um, not every day's practice looks the same. People see some of the things that I do. And because I had a physical goal attached to my practice, a lot of my poses and asanas that I get into 
are are more are advanced or whatever. Um, but that's just my personal practice. But in terms of that breath, understanding that awareness, that intention, that purposefulness that is associated with yoga practice and it's beyond just stretching and pilates and gymnastics moves it's really understanding who you are you know how do you feel right now and can you move through that space to get to a point of balance and peace and that's what's going to separate yoga <clears throat> to me from other health and wellness um activities and i feel that it should be a part you know a, a not necessary but I think it's an important part of a self-care practice too because it has so many implications for you off your mat so that's kind of like the base of why yoga like it started off as something like really really superficial and some people say low vibrating and that's okay sometimes we low vibrate with our lower selves and it's about understanding where our lower self is in relation to our higher self so that brings me to my mission in yoga, so I said that it was to bring people of color, especially black men and women and children into the realm of understanding self-care through yoga. Um, I sat with a friend and we were like, how do we get black folks, especially hood folks, like, like I mean, like in certain spaces, there are certain people who, who will meditate with you, burn that sage, carry those crystals and understand that that's part of their natural everyday conversation. And then there are other people who look at you like, Ugh fuck are you talking about like crystals and people get fearful about what they think yoga is and it is are, are you communing with hindu gods and i've had people tell me that i'm talking to the devil and considering that i believe that yoga is about understanding self since i don't have you know i'm not trying to under well we do have that balance of good light and energy but that's a whole nother conversation i'm not going in deep that way right now but basically I'm not even here worshiping the devil because I don't feel that that's somebody <laughs> that should be <laughs> communed with right now. So it's like, I'm not journeying to him, um, whoever that might be for you. Um, so anyway, so it's like, we sat here like, how do we get folks in the hood to really understand what the basis of yoga is? Like, from like you can Google yoga all you want to, you know, you'll come up with some very Western ideas of yoga and doesn't even represent what the ancient Hindu practice is are or what the ancient Indian practices are and then it doesn't even highlight the fact that there are some ancient African cultures that also practice what is going to be considered you know yoga um, and yoga all that means is is joining together you know a link <laughs> mind body breath right anyway so how do we get folks in the hood to take care of self to understand self travel to self understand their mind use their breath and be better people holistically and so we sit in the car of course trap music trap music is bumping in the background we're like yo why we just call it like trap yoga like we seeing all this shit like trap brunch trap karaoke and so like two years ago it's like yeah let's call it trap yoga it's like why not right like just bump some trap music and tell people to come to yoga class like and that gets you in the door and it's like so then you get people questioning like whoa what the fuck is trap yoga like how is trap yoga different from other pieces of yoga? Like, what do you do different in trap yoga, like, other than listen to trap music? And so that's when I had a friend help me with how do we elevate just trap yoga? Like, um, how do we make it so that we're understanding that it's just, we want to take ourselves from where we are here to this place here. And especially for people in the hood, it's like, I'm in the middle of my storm. I'm in the middle of shit. You know, my water's off, my gas is off. I don't give a fuck about, you know, some zen and some pretty picture on the lake. You know, you know, I live next door to the bando. You know, I don't got $40 for a yoga mat or $100 for some yoga pants. And that's the Western idea of what yoga is, you know. So we decided to take it and call it the tra um, Transcend Reality Acquire Peace. So basically meeting you where you are and being real with what self-care is. Like putting no strings on it, not putting no flashy shit on it. Like really being authentic and real with self-care and really creating a space where you feel comfortable. And that's just like, that's, that's the essence of trap yoga for me. And you'll see it's the trap yoga movement out here. You got the trap yoga bay. Um, I know she was out in Chicago. 
She's out in Atlanta this week. She's been out in Miami. And then, of course, you've got Brandon Copeland, who started the Trap Yoga in D.C. Um, and Black Girl Magic Yoga classes. And I know he's in Atlanta for the month talking about Trap Yoga. So it's like, it's wonderful that we're creating this space um, for for black that black urban individual to feel like they belong in that space, belong in this in this transition to positivity and this transition to balance. And so um, I just encourage everybody, like, if you don't know where to start, I'm going to have a video about where to start yoga, how to start yoga. But I just wanted to introduce myself and kind of put myself out there for what I'm trying to do. Um, if you're in Cleveland, um, look me up. We're trying to have some pop-up trap yoga classes. We'll be at Garfield Park. We're we'll doing some stuff downtown. Um, we'll be working with Africa House. Gonna be um, hopefully starting a whole lot of things. And then we do. I do have a separate movement called My Trap Queens, which I specifically cater to the health and wellness of my beautiful, beautiful sisters out here. Um, especially ones that don't feel like they fit into that collective conscious movement. Um, when we create spaces, sometimes when we put these labels on things, they tend to exclude other people. Even with the goodest intentions, even with the best intentions, um, some people still don't feel comfortable in certain spaces. And that's just real. So I want to eliminate that as much as possible. I don't care what your background is. Like, this is really about, like, finding peace no matter what your storm is. Because we got to learn to navigate. We, we got to learn how to to, um, to build ourselves up, you know, um, and how to stay strong and steadfast and grounded and balanced. Yo, if, like, I hate to get real political, so I'm not really going to get political right here, but it's, it's, a, it's a war going to go, go, go on right now, you know. And soldiers got to be ready, you know. And by that, I mean it's like, whether it's a, a physical warfare, spiritual warfare, or mental warfare, like if you're not prepared for this fight for this long haul, you know, what's the point of it? So it's like we gotta get ourselves ready. We gotta understand who we are. You know, this veil is being pulled off left and right. And with that, you know, comes comes great responsibility on us, you know, to be prepared. And so I feel like one way to do that is just creating this space so that we're all equipped if we're ready. Like, I can't force you to do nothing, you know? And that's not what this yoga should be about. It's about being there for those who want to know what it means. It's about being a space for those who want to see something different, who want to travel a little deeper. Um, so, like I said, I'll be adding a video about what how to start yoga, a lot of yogis on the internet, social media, they get asked a lot of questions, especially the more popular you are, uh, the more people are going to say, oh my God, how'd you start? I want to be just like you. Oh my God, goals. <laughs> and it can be overwhelming, especially when people are really like everyday like people and they're like, yo, start yoga like I did. Look it up. Like, so <laughs> um, trying to take the ego out of that answer for y'all and give you some ideas. Um, but again, it's a self journey. So where I could tell you to start, eh, it, it's going to mean something different for everybody else. So you have to understand what that's going to mean for your life. And um, what it starts with is trying to figure out what you're trying to get out of it. And that'll teach you where you should start. So start with that question. So if you want to try yoga, ask yourself, what do I want to get out of this practice? What do I want to add to my life? And that question we should have whenever we add, trying to add new knowledge anyway. How will this fit in? You know, what do I already possess in my, in my, you know, data bank? And will this fit in and how will it fit in? Um, and will I be open to it having to push other notions out as I reevaluate and relearn? People are scared to change. Remember that. So don't be scared. Don't fear. Fear is not necessary on this place. So, again, it's a lot here. But like I said, the Trap Yoga Queen here, based out in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so there's a lot of Trap Yoga movements going on. And there's a lot of yoga movements in general. So if you're looking for something local, um, it's there. And I'll have some online stuff for you real soon, just in case you're not finding it in your location. All right. All right.